Welcome back, everyone. Islam's prophet Muhammad left a very troubling legacy, and his words and actions, which made up that legacy, have been carefully recorded and passed down by pious Muslims, primarily in his biographies and in the Hadith. In these sources, violence is rampant. It's there we read about people being tortured with fire before execution, or about Muhammad ordering people who criticized him to be killed. Even women who sang satirical songs deserved the death penalty. This woman, who was a Jew, you always have to say Jew in Muslim sources to accurately convey the disdain that the Muslim sources have for these people, this Jew was strangled with Muhammad's approval. And yes, let me address the Dawah talking points about this Hadith being weak. That still means it has a maximum chance of about 85% of being entirely accurate. But there's even a lesson in weak Hadith, namely that pious Muslim scholars throughout the centuries have considered these violent portraits of Muhammad as plausible and probable, at the very least. And it's in these same sources that, very importantly, Muhammad tied violence to religion and, well, money. So Muhammad will spare your life if you pay him money and, of course, agree to be subjugated by the Islamic State, which sounds like a Muslim mafia. Muhammad and his companions used the sword to urge people to accept Islam. Muhammad provided safety of people's lives and property if they accepted Islam, because notice, the earth belongs to Allah and his apostle. Which I have to say sounds like another striking example of Islamic binetarianism. They're two-thirds on their way to their own version of the Trinity. According to the Quran in many verses, the earth belongs to Allah. But the earth belongs to Allah and Muhammad also, one of many puzzles of pure Islamic monotheism. Oh, how the Islamic tradition has exalted its prophet. Muhammad continued his cocktail of violence and religion by announcing that he would expel everyone from Arabia except for Muslims, a quest that Islamic leaders after him continued. And this continued until the Islamic empire spread its oppressive rule for millions of square miles, erasing entire societies and reshaping them in its own image. In modern, fashionable Western terms, this sounds a little bit like imperialism or colonialism, showing complete disregard for multiculturalism and diversity. And according to this stupid but predictable, fashionable Western fad, the oppressive history of Islam and the ideology of its founder get a free pass, as do so many modern Islamists who follow Muhammad's violent example. And today's example comes from the Congo. In a horrifying massacre in the Democratic Republic of the Congo back in May, a militant Muslim group affiliated with ISIS slaughtered 14 Catholics after they refused to convert to Islam. In condemning the attack, Pope Francis explained that their throats were slit simply because they were Christians and didn't want to convert to Islam. The same Muslim group carried out an earlier attack in the Central African nation where the Catholic news agency reports that 11 Christians were executed with machetes and rifles on May 13th, while several others were kidnapped and some houses were set on fire. For several years, Islamic terrorism has been on the rise in this region, as evidenced by the bombing of a large Catholic church in 2021. The Catholic news agency noted that a large-scale project is underway to Islamize or expel the indigenous populations of the region. Here's the reoccurring pattern. Muslim terrorists kidnap local Christians and offer them a choice between death or converting to Islam. Our world seems ignorant about the driving force behind these massacres executed against Christians worldwide at the hands of Muslim terrorists. Many insist on painting these terrorists as fanatics who are driven mainly by evil desires to kill. However, the reality is clearly different. These terrorists terrify and kill with a sword in one hand and a sacred book in the other. These Catholics in Congo chose death over conversion to Islam and gave their lives for their choice. Speak loudly for them. Stand in solidarity with our other persecuted Christians worldwide. We've got a voice. Let it count. To me, these events seem to be modern examples of Jesus' words about violence against those who followed him. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. After these attacks, protests against Islamic violence broke out at universities across the West. Hundreds of thousands participated in anti-jihad parades. Crowds burned Islamic books that promote violence, racism, and oppression. Or not. It's better not to notice violence against Christians in Congo or Nigeria or against anyone anywhere. In fact, it's better not to notice Islam's violence and oppression at all, because then we might have to criticize it. And that's hard to do in a society that has lost its moral backbone. But the point is so simple and clear. Muhammad was a violent man who left a violent legacy. Evidence his legacy lives on is apparent far too often around the world, most recently in the Congo. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.